King Charles, accompanied by Queen Camilla, embarked on a four-day state visit to Kenya, marking his first visit as monarch to a former colony. The visit is significant as it seeks to address the painful aspects of Britain's colonial history in Kenya. Local leaders are pushing for reparations, urging the British monarchy to recognize the abuses of the colonial past, including torture, killings, and land expropriation. Charles's visit coincides with a growing demand among former colonies for acknowledgement and reconciliation of historical wrongs. The visit will also include meetings with Kenyan entrepreneurs and tours of wildlife facilities. In Gaza, the health ministry has accused Israel of persistently targeting hospitals and medical centers, leading to a significant loss of medical staff and damage to healthcare facilities. According to Ashraf al Kudra, the spokesman for the Gaza Health Ministry, 130 medical staff members have lost their lives and 57 medical institutions have been hit intentionally by Israeli forces. Additionally, 32 medical centers are now out of service due to either being targeted or facing fuel shortages. The Turkish-Palestinian Friendship Hospital was also directly targeted and partially destroyed, causing distress among cancer patients. The word Israel is conspicuously absent from the digital mapping platforms of Chinese tech giants Baidu and Alibaba, as reported by the Wall Street Journal. While Baidu's Chinese-language online maps include the delineation of Israel and the Palestinian territories, the country's name is notably omitted. A similar situation is observed on Alibaba's map platform. It remains uncertain whether Israel was marked on these maps prior to events that transpired on October 7. UNICEF has expressed deep concern over the increasing number of child casualties in Gaza since the escalation of the Israel-Palestine conflict on October 7. Gaza has become a graveyard of children, warned UNICEF spokesperson James Elder during a UN press briefing in Geneva. UNICEF reiterated its plea for an immediate ceasefire and humanitarian access to the region to provide essential medical care, as children in Gaza are not only threatened by airstrikes but also suffer due to inadequate medical services. The death toll in Gaza now stands at 8,525 Palestinians, including 3,542 children, with 2,187 women among the casualties. Additionally, 130 healthcare personnel have lost their lives, and 15 hospitals and 32 healthcare centers are now out of service. A study published in Nature Geoscience proposes that fine dust from pulverized rock ejected into Earth's atmosphere following the dinosaur exterminating asteroid impact 66 million years ago played a more significant role in their extinction than previously thought. This dust blocked sunlight, causing a nearly two-year halt in photosynthesis, a vital process for life. The resulting food web collapse triggered a chain reaction of extinctions, according to planetary scientist Jem Burke Senel, the study's lead author. Previous theories had focused on sulfur and soot from wildfires causing a global winter. Canada has shifted its stance on the Israel-Hamas conflict, now advocating for a humanitarian truce just three days after abstaining from a UN resolution supporting the same. Foreign Affairs Minister Ma Copyright Laney Jolie emphasized the need for all parties to agree on the truce to facilitate the evacuation of foreign nationals, including Canadians, the release of hostages, and the delivery of essential supplies to Gaza. The United Nations adopted a resolution on Friday to protect civilians and uphold humanitarian obligations during the crisis. 14 countries, including the United States and Israel, opposed it, while Canada, among others, abstained. Pakistan has issued an ultimatum to approximately 1.7 million Afghan individuals living irregularly within its borders, directing them to leave the country by November 1st or face deportation. This move, described as an unprecedented crackdown by rights groups and lawyers, comes as tensions have escalated between the two nations since the Taliban's assumption of power in Afghanistan in 2021. Pakistan cites the need to protect its welfare and security, while the Afghan embassy in Islamabad condemns the decision as harassment. The US and Ukraine have refuted accusations made by Russian President Vladimir Putin who alleged that the West and Ukraine orchestrated an anti-Israel riot at an airport in Dagestan. Putin claimed they organized the deadly chaos, but the U.S. dismissed the allegations as absurd, with a spokesperson for the National Security Council stating that it was hate, bigotry, and intimidation, pure and simple. Ukraine also denied involvement in the incident, which saw an angry mob storm the airport in Makhachkala, 
creating tensions amid complex alliances and rising ethnic conflicts in Russia. Turkish President Recep Tayyip Erdogan addressed a massive pro-Palestinian rally in Istanbul, declaring that Israel was an occupier in its actions in Gaza. He reiterated his stance that Hamas is not a terrorist organization, despite Israel's objections. The rally, organized by Turkey's governing AK party, drew hundreds of thousands of supporters protesting Israel's bombardment of Gaza and calling for a ceasefire. Erdogan blamed Western powers as the main culprit behind the Israeli military's actions in Gaza. The rally saw various leaders, media figures, and sports personalities in attendance, supporting the Palestinian cause. The World Bank has issued a warning in its latest Commodity Markets Outlook report, suggesting that ongoing tensions between Israel and Hamas could lead to record high oil prices if the conflict escalates. In a scenario resembling the 1973 Arab oil embargo, oil prices could surge to $157 per barrel a 56% to 75% increase from current levels. This projection is one of three scenarios outlined, depending on the extent of oil supply disruptions. Under the baseline estimates, oil prices are expected to average $90 a barrel in the current quarter, but may decrease to $81 per barrel by 2024, assuming limited conflict expansion. In a bold statement, Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu has firmly opposed calls for a ceasefire in the ongoing conflict with Hamas, characterizing them as demands for Israel to surrender to Hamas. Humanitarian groups in the United Nations have urged a halt to the fighting. Netanyahu emphasized the Israeli military's efforts to minimize civilian casualties while accusing Hamas of hindering civilian evacuation. Israel's military advances deeper into Gaza have heightened concerns. Recent developments include the rescue of an abducted soldier and the tragic death of a German-Israeli citizen. Hostages held by Hamas released a video plea, and hospitals in Gaza suffered damage. Aid shipments, although increasing, still fall short of meeting the needs of Gaza's civilians. In the West Bank, clashes between Israeli forces and Palestinians have resulted in casualties.